In this video, we're going to begin our discussion of insertion sort, and that begins with a supplementary method called sorted insert. This method will take an array, and the size of the array as an input, as well as an element that we are adding to that array. We're assuming that this array is in sorted order, and what we're going to do is try to insert this element x also in sorted order. So we have a sorted array. And then we're going to be adding on some additional element, x. We will then be slowly moving this element to the left until it is in the correct location to be sorted. So eventually we will have some of the array followed by this element x, followed by the rest of the array. So the implementation here is relatively straightforward. Step one, we append x to the array. We are then going to iterate through the array starting at the right hand side, and j is equal to n. And then we are going to continually swap that element with x if it is not in order. So while a is not on the far left hand side of the array, so there are still elements to compare it to, if a j is greater than a j plus one, what that means is that we have something like one, four, eight, three, ten. That three is not in sorted order. So while the three is smaller than the eight, we must keep swapping leftward until it ends up in sorted order. So how can we analyze this? First, let's identify that there are several different cases that we need to consider. The best case and worst case. The best case for this would be that the element that we're adding is greater than everything in the array. Would be that a greater than a n. I don't need to say it's greater than everything because it's already in sorted order. As long as it is greater than the maximum element, it would be for sure greater than all of the things before it. So if that's the case, let's look at what the code does. Well, we add it, and then this if statement is never actually qualified, so we don't even execute it. So the best case runtime would be theta of one. We're just doing constant time operations, appending to the array and then doing some swapping. We'll come back to whether or not appending to the array is a constant time operation, but for now, let's assume that it is. Worst case. What is the worst case running time? The worst case running time would be that we need to swap this element x all the way over to the start. We need to iterate over the entire array. This would be that x is less than a1. If that's the case, we would need to iterate over the entirety of a, so it would be in theta of n. And since we're in the probabilistic unit, you can probably guess that we're also interested in the expected case. And maybe for this, it's actually easiest to try and just do it out manually. So down here, I created one of our little tables to keep track of what's happening. So if we have that it is greater than or equal to every single element in the array that takes constant time. If we need to perform one swap, we are doing one run of the loop. So it's that same constant time plus the time from executing one run of the loop. And then two runs of the loop. And then three runs of the loop. And then we need to be careful here about what is happening. If we look, we had n minus two and n minus three, and uh, we had four C. We actually are off by one in terms of the number of th things we are doing because we always are doing that constant time to insert it into the array. So this would actually be n plus one times C. This would be n C, and this would be n minus one C. That's not going to impact anything really, but it's worth being careful. And now we encounter the tough part, which is that we don't know these probabilities. We need to make assumptions to be able to analyze the probabilities. So what assumptions are we going to make? So our assumptions assume we're going to assume that A has no duplicates. And we are going to assume that all positions for x are equally likely. So all 
positions for x are equally likely. You could say that this in a slightly more mathematical way by saying all permutations of a1, a2, up until a n and then x, all permutations of that are equally likely is really what we're assuming. But that's a bit tedious to word, so I'm just going to say all positions for x are equally likely. It's a little bit of a nicer to write out assumption. So with that in mind, I've already effectively said that all of these probabilities must be the same. How many events are there? Well, there are actually n plus 1 events, so this is 1 over n plus 1, 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 and 1 over n plus 1. To compute the probability, we are just going to multiply these two columns together and add up. So the expected time is the sum over all outcomes of the probability of that outcome times the time of that outcome. And we know what those things are. Now let's try and analyze the summation. We're going to add up over all the possible values. I'm going to come back to the values there, but the probability, we're going to say that we're going to have the probability that we're between AQ and AQ plus 1. And similarly, we're going to have the time required when that's true. And what are the possible values for Q? Well, they're going to go from Q equals 0 to N. And if you're very astute about our notation, you'd say, hold on, our arrays don't go down to 0. But for that special case where we're going between A0 and A1, we're just going to assume we're in this case down here. So it's just a ease of notation. So let's plug in our values. That probability, it's the same for all occurrences. So we have 1 over n plus 1. And what is the time required here? It's actually going to be n plus 1 minus q. Why is that? Because in our problem here, the first thing to appear in the summation is actually this last term down here which takes n plus 1 time. We are starting at the largest thing and counting backwards in this summation. So this equals, I'm going to, I've got a constant c. I'm going to pull out the c over n plus 1 and have the sum from q equals 0 to n of n plus 1 minus q. And that is a arithmetic summation. Let's write it out to verify that. So I'm going to do that down here the sum from q equals 0 to n of n plus 1 minus q is equal to the first term of that summation is q equals 0 so that's n plus 1 plus the next term is n plus n minus 1 plus all the way down until the last value is plugging in n which is just 1 so this is an arithmetic summation adding up the first the numbers between 1 and n plus 1 so that will converge to n plus 1 times n plus 2 all over 2. So let's use that fact up above. This equals c over n plus 1 times n plus 1 times n plus 2 all over 2, which is just c times n plus 2. over 2, which is about half of the size of the array, which is what you might expect for an average case runtime here. So bringing it all together up top, the expected case is theta of n as well. It is the same as the worst case. With this in mind, it's very easy to learn how to modify this into a sorting algorithm, so let's get that done really quickly. All we're doing in this sorting algorithm, which we're going to call insertion sort, is we're going to loop over every single element of the array and insert it in sorted order into the array, one at a time. So we start with an array of nothing, add the first element, sort it, add the second element, 
sort it, add the third element, sort it, add the fourth element, sort it, and repeat on and on and on and on. So a very straightforward sorting algorithm in that sense. And I will show you here, this is the first time I've used comments in my code just to show you the way they look. So we have two comments here. Uh, one is that we are inserting a i plus one into a one through i. This is a bit of a technicality to say what we're doing in there. And then we're also going to say what we're maintaining be true, which is that a one through a i is always sorted. And because sorted insert maintains sorted order and we start with zero elements in the array, this should work. Let's begin by analyzing the worst case runtime. The worst case for this algorithm if we remember, our worst case was that sorted insert was in theta of n. So this code chunk here, it might be very tempting to say that this is in theta of n, but that is not the case because of a technicality that is very, very important. That technicality is if we scroll up to our sorted insert, we'll notice that it was in theta of n, but n was the second input argument to that function. And if we scroll back down, to our sorted insert here, our second value is i. So this is in theta of i. And the reason is the number of elements that are currently in sorted order is i. So this code would take ci time in the worst case, which means that the algorithm's worst case can be computed by doing the sum from i equals one to n of ci. We have a formula for that. That would just be C times N minus one times N all over two, which is in theta of N squared. Our best case runtime would be theta of one for our best case, which makes it the sum from i equals 1 to n minus 1 of a constant, which is just c times n minus 1, which is in theta of n. So there's some hope for this algorithm here. It has a worst case and best case that are different, and the best case is in fact fantastic. So let's see what the expected case is. The expected case was theta of n as well, which again we should be careful, that should be theta of i. So the expected case. It's important to remember that we are, for the expected case, trying to find out the expected value of that for loop. And I'm just gonna write sorted insert here. And we're adding up from i equals one to n minus one, and we want to know how long did sorted insert take with an input of size i. By linearity of expectation, I can pull the summation out there, and I have the expected value of sorted insert as a function of i. And we know what that expected value is. I already wrote it down. It's theta of one. So this is equal to the sum from i equals one to n minus one of ci, which this is the exact same as the worst case. So this takes c times n minus one times n to all over two, which is in theta of n squared. Notice that once we had sorted insert analyzed, this was super fast. It took maybe a couple of minutes and all we had to do was just use the information we had before. Importantly, when we're just iterating over a function and we know the entire classification of it, best, worst, and expected case, determining how that impacts thing is very straightforward. So anything that looks like this, you can perform a similar sort of analysis. We notice that the worst case and the best case are different and the expected case is the same as the worst case, which is a bit unfortunate. A natural question, therefore, might be when do these various cases occur for the best case and worst case? Well, the worst case here is actually that the array appears in reverse sorted order. So if you had an array that was exactly sorted incorrectly, then you would need to continually move every single element uh, from the end all the way back to the start every single time. So this is in reverse sorted order. The best case is actually something similar 
the best case is when we never had to move things from the right to the left. So this is when the array was already sorted. And in fact, the best case could extend if you only needed to perform a small number of insertions. So a lot of the time, this would be nearly sorted. And it would still be asymptotically the same as the best case. For example, if you had five elements out of order and you just needed to sort those, then this would be very, very quick at doing that. 